Thanks, ma'am. The last blast furnace in what was the Youngstown Steel District came down this afternoon in Warren. At its peak, there were 27 blast furnaces around the area, not only in Warren, but Youngstown, Sharon, Hubbard, Sharpsville, Newcastle, even in Lowville. A few steel workers who once worked at Warren's blast furnace gathered this morning to watch it come down. What stood for 96 years, helped to win wars and build America, took a mere 10 seconds to fall. There it goes. There it comes, go. Rick Rollins runs Youngstown Steel Heritage, which collects pieces of the area's industrial past. We showed him the blast furnace coming down. That's a bad thing to see the last one go like that. The iron temperature like... like a Six years ago, I was the last reporter to tour Warren's blast furnace. Within a year, it was shut down. When built in 1921, it was known as Trumbull Cliffs, the largest blast furnace in the country. For most of its life, it was part of Republic Steel, but changed ownership nine times. For Rick Rollins, this was a sad day. Oh, definitely. You know, I mean, this is... Was it, uh, you know, 150 years or better of, um, you know, industrial activity, steel making, all that in the valley, that, uh, you know, one of the more iconic pieces of it are, are now gone. As a collector of Youngstown Steel Heritage, Rollins would have liked pieces of the blast furnace for his collection, but could never find the right person to get them. The four stoves next to the blast furnace are still standing, and one person today told me they're loaded with asbestos and may remain there because it would be too costly to take them down. The blast furnace itself will be cut up and sold as scrap. There it goes. There it comes, go. I was told by more than one person today that an effort was made to try and keep the demolition of the Warren Blast Furnace secret, which is perhaps why it was done on a Sunday and only a few steel workers showed up.